<laughs> this is ridiculous. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I've got a tower of next-gen gaming laptops here. Ordinarily, I'd be looking at these on the show floor in Vegas at CES, but of course it's all uh, virtual this year due to COVID. Um, but Asus were very kind and actually sent me almost their entire new range of gaming laptops. We've got the Strix, the Scars, uh, the Zephyrus Duos, and also a brand new laptop called the ROG Flex X13. This is possibly one of the most exciting new laptops I've seen in a long time. So the big news here is the upgrade to the RTX 3000 series graphics and also of course AMD Zen 3 processors. Now unfortunately I'm not allowed to run proper benchmarks on these pre-release models but a couple of Geekbench scores popped up online with the new RTX 3070 and 80 OpenCL scores. And if I then bring in my current Razer Blade 15 Advanced with the previous top spec 2080 Super, based on this we're looking at a whopping 40% boost in terms of graphics. Although of course these results aren't confirmed and also likely from pre-release models. But paired with the new Zen 3 chips, these new laptops are looking pretty tasty. What's interesting though is if we take the Mobile 3080, it actually has 16 gigs of VRAM, which is significantly more than the 10 gigs in its desktop counterpart. However, it's slower GDDR6 rather than 6x memory, and we're getting 30% fewer CUDA cores. So roughly, I'd expect the Mobile 3080 to perform similarly to the desktop 3070. Anyway, let's get back to the laptops, and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you do enjoy this video. So let's kick off with these. This is the new ROG Scar 15. Uh, this is its bigger brother, the 17. And these are your top of the line, money no object, kind of flagship pro gamer laptops. We've got top end CPUs and GPUs. This particular model has the RTX 3080. Uh, we've also got the Ryzen 9 5900HX in this one. The performance gain we're gonna see from these new CPUs and the new GPUs is probably gonna be one of the biggest leaps forward in gaming laptop performance we've seen in years. And paired with the new Zen 3 CPUs, which uh, definitely pushed the multi-core performance ahead, as I say, overall, these are gonna be quite nice upgrades uh, from your current gaming laptop if you've already got one. So these are both still unmistakably gaming laptops. We actually have this quite interesting looking translucent chassis. You can see a little bit of the sort of inner workings underneath. But overall, I think this is a fantastic looking laptop with their famous light bar at the front, which they've refined slightly. We get on both models. Uh, we also get an 85% bigger trackpad across the two. And also, if you listen to this, not your average keyboard. These are both optical mechanical keyboards. Uh, so they're not your traditional mechanical switches, but you get that sort of more tactile feedback and it's also a lot more responsive, especially if you are pressing the same key very, very quickly. The bezels are also a touch thinner, so now we're looking at 85% screen to body ratio, up from 80 last year. Although you can see, unfortunately, there is no room for a webcam on these laptops. So it's not the end of the world, but you'll have to plug in an external webcam. One other change you might see on the back here, if I can get a close up with my uh, cameraman Pete, are these little rubber, what Asus call armor caps. So this uh, thermal exhaust vent cap here, we've also got this little rubber foot underneath. These can actually be changed. This is the gray version. You get three different colors with you, and you can also 3D print your own ones if you've got a resin 3D printer to hand. But the other big upgrade is the displays because we actually get three different options. This SCAR 15 has a 165 hertz quad HD screen, which I think is quite a nice balance if you're not an esports gamer, but you want that sort of, as I say, balance between sharpness from the resolution and that smoother refresh rate. You also have a Full HD 300 hertz option, which I have on this 17, and it also goes up to Full HD 360 hertz 360 is a little bit overkill. I think for most people, 300 is more than enough. There's definitely diminishing returns, even over 165, to be honest. But if you're an esports gamer, pro gamer, you can see the difference, or you just want the best of the best, then it's good that we have these options. So we're looking at more compact designs, new 90 watt hour batteries, type C charging if you want it. So you don't have to log around a giant power supply if you're not using this for gaming. And also, of course, the new and latest AMD CPUs and Nvidia GPUs. So. It's all gonna come down to pricing. These are not gonna be cheap, but I don't wanna to get too bogged down in these because there are four other laptops I wanna show you. And I wanna jump straight into talking about this guy, which is actually very similar to these, but this is the new 
uh, ROG Strix 15. And the good news is that this gets pretty much all the same upgrades as the SCAR, including uh, the bigger trackpad, a bigger battery, faster Type-C charging, improved speakers. Also, we're getting 165 Quad HD options on the screen and Full HD 300, so not that crazy 360 hertz option, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, the RAM also tops out at 32 gigs rather than 64, and we also get a more traditional keyboard, not that optical mechanical keyboard. So we're missing some of the bells and whistles of these, but I think for most people, this is still gonna be more than enough. And as I say, with a 3070 in here and a Ryzen 7 5800H, it's incredibly powerful as well. And actually, while we also have a light bar down here, which not everyone loves, and the good news is you can turn off if you want, it's just a bit more snazzy looking, I think. While these two are arguably more premium, uh, this actually comes in three different colors. I've got it in the, um, I want to call it hot pink, but it's actually exotic punk. But it also comes in Eclipse Grey and also Original Black, if you prefer. So these are the three sort of main traditional flagship gaming laptops. Uh, prices haven't been confirmed yet. I suspect we'll start seeing them come out end of January, sort of early February. So not long to wait. And I will, of course, review them properly on the channel. So make sure you have subscribed. Ah. So while I've been filming this Asus video, uh, a nice little gift package from Acer came, along with a couple of their new laptops as well. I love taking a Predator shot while I'm reviewing Asus laptops. <laughs> okay, let's move on. And I've got one of my favorite laptops from last year here again, 2021 model. So as it says on the tin, the Zephyrus Duo is all about having the two screens. And so we've got this either Full HD 300 Hertz 15 inch main screen or 4K 120. Yes, 4K 120, which I've got on here, which I can't think of another laptop that has a 4K 120 screen actually. We might see more of them coming this year, but that is definitely a standout feature. Along with, of course, this big 14 inch screen pad plus and along with that as you'd expect from everything i've shown you so far all the latest hardware as well we've got the rtx 3018 here also the ryzen 9 5900h so this is going to be a very powerful and also very expensive laptop as you expect i'm thinking probably three and a half to four grand again so maybe i'll just get the one and while you're gaming on here you could maybe have your twitch stream down here or some youtube help videos or your spotify whatever you like uh, and actually it did feel faster than last year because they have updated the software although those updates will be coming to the older models as well so one of the most interesting new features for me is the fact that we get this 4k 120 screen but you may be thinking who cares why is 4k 120 important because even with the new 3080 graphics cards you're not going to get anything close to that with AAA games with high settings. Well, they're pitching this as both a super high-end gaming laptop, but also a bit of a workstation. So when I'm, say, editing video, or I just want a very slick and smooth desktop experience, I can use that full 4K 120. But then in games, I can drop that down and get 1080p 120 and get crazy FPS, which is pretty good. But if you are thinking about dropping a few thousand pounds on this just for gaming, then of course you should go with the full HD 300 hertz option. But since we do have this big screen here, of course, the keyboard and the trackpad has to be pushed right to the front. It's the same as the last couple of generations of it. But surprisingly, the keyboard is actually quite nice. It's not a mechanical keyboard or anything like that, but it still feels nice to use. There's a good amount of travel. Uh, the keys are well spaced out. The only negative for me is the trackpad, I think. It's not my favorite position. You do get used to it. And of course you could use a mouse. And I actually did ask Asus about you know, left-handed users. And they said just quite frankly that not enough people wanted that or need it or if you know lefties do use this they either use a mouse or they get used to it so um not an ideal setup but i think given the overall form factor of this which is also slimmer lighter more compact the usual design upgrades this year given everything you're getting the specs that second screen it's a very good use of space and you can see and uh, we've got this ergo lift as well so as the screen pops up a little bit it did this last year as well but you get better airflow under here which obviously helps with cooling and also a slightly better uh, position for the screen so you don't have to lean over quite as much as you did with the first generation model although as you can see we're still getting this pretty chunky bezel down here so it's not like this just one flowing screen which would be quite nice but overall a nice little upgrade for one of the most expensive laptops you're ever going to be able to buy okay i've saved the best till last because asus has been coming up with something pretty tasty in their R&D labs. This is what I've been hoping we'd see for years now. We've got a thin and light 
pretty ordinary looking uh, Ultrabook. It's actually got a 1650 graphics card in here, although that will be replaced with whatever Nvidia comes out with pretty soon, along with the latest AMD processors. I think I've got a 5900HS in here, so no slouch in terms of performance. 16 by 10, 4K60 or full HD 120, and a 360 hinge. A pretty capable little thin and light gaming laptop, but that's just half the story because the uh, very clever engineers over at ASUS have also come up with this guy. Inside this tiny little thing, we have a full fat RTX 3080. And so once you, uh, as you can see, plug it in, we've also got this whole IO hub here as well. There's actually a little stand, so you can plonk that on your desk, plug it in of course, and then connect this to the proprietary connector on the side of the X13, and you've got one of the most powerful gaming laptops in the entire world in this setup. So you basically have the benefit of a thin and light gaming laptop, light gaming laptop for when you're on the go or traveling, but then you can come home to the office or you know the studio, the gaming room, whatever, wherever you play your games, plug it into this guy. You can even take it with you given how small it is, and then it just completely transforms the performance. And what makes it stand out really, aside from just other laptops you could plug an eGPU in, firstly is that we have some pretty powerful eight core uh, latest Zen 3 processors. Also the fact we've got a 3080 in here, and if you think about all those other eGPU enclosures that are big sort of Xbox Series X sized desktop things you can't really put in a backpack, this is just next generation stuff, it really is, as is this guy, the connector, because we've got this Thunderbolt 3 uh, USB-C on this side, which does all the sort of charging and all the IO hub data, which then frees up this guy to give you unlimited bandwidth essentially between the GPU and a laptop. So unlike a traditional eGPU thing, which is not only massive, but then limited by Thunderbolt 3 and the fact that it has to send uh, power and some data across as well for the IO, it's a completely uncompromised solution to having an external graphics card with a thin and light laptop. I love this combination. There are still some big questions though, as when I come to fully review them, will we run into any cooling or thermal issues? Will these new laptops be even more expensive? We'll have to wait for file pricing. And I guess on the flip side of that, will we see current 2070 and 2080 laptops get even cheaper? Buying previous gen can often be the best value. But if you have a gaming laptop at the moment, which one is it? And would you consider upgrading to one of these? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more from me, if you enjoyed this video and me just waffling on for 10 minutes about gaming laptops, hit that like and subscribe button below. And I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.